Okay, everybody. So we're going to be learning um, to draw in perspective this afternoon. So if you haven't learned perspective or done this before, I'll take you through the principles. Um, if you stand in the middle of a railway track, which I really don't recommend, uh, the last thing you're going to see uh, is um, the two lines of the railway tracks converging to a single vanishing point on the horizon. Okay. This is because things that are parallel to it to each other, anything that's parallel, like this, the size of these two uh, rulers here, will converge and get smaller as it goes away from you. So you can see that quite happening quite easily there as we go down along the ruler, that it's smaller in the distance and closer as it's nearer to you. There's also another effect you can see happening on the ruler. You can see that the gaps between the numbers get smaller and tinier as it goes away from you. So they're the two main principles that we'll be dealing with uh, today. If you take your railway track and turn it on the side, so you take a railway track, turn that on the side, we get the effect of this. Okay. I can then put another railway track this side of the vanishing point. And then what that allows me to do is cut a short side and make a long side. So we have a box in perspective. Now if I want to find the quickest way to the center of a square, the quickest way would be to do a cross through the middle and that finds the perfect center. But this also has a, a lovely other aspect to it, that if the box is going away in perspective, and I still do the cross, I still find the exact center. But what's happened this time is this division here becomes wider than that division as it's further away from you. So it calculates it perfectly for you when you want to find the apex of a roof. So just to demonstrate that, I can put across here, across here. Can you copy this, what I'm doing, on a sketchbook? and then draw up the apex of the roof, and I can draw that down here and here. The roof here is parallel to the wall, so that one will naturally converge to the vanishing point down here. Then I can just simply copy the angle at the front, and then that will give me a building in two-point perspective. And then you can add additional chimneys and roof, uh, windows and doors and things like that onto it. Okay, so one of the important aspects about drawing in perspective is that if you are high up on, let's turn the paper over, so if you're high up on a car park, multi-story car park, and um, you are looking at the buildings below you, and we draw these buildings below the eye line, do a cross there, we'll be able to see down into the chimneys on top of the roofs that way. Conversely, if you are at a low viewpoint and the building rises up above the, the eye line, you won't be able to see into the chimney and you won't even hardly be able to see the roof. So it's a really good technique for kind of working things out. So this is Turner's house. So Turner designed this in his 20s, I think it was. He was very young when he designed this house. Um, and I imagine that's Turner and his wife sitting out there in the back garden. This is the back, back of the house here. Okay. Um, so that's going to be our subject. And we're going to learn to do this in two-point perspective. So make sure that you've got a ruler, a pencil, uh, and paper. So what we need to establish first of all by looking at this picture is where actually is the eye line. So the eye line is about here, so it's a fairly moderate one. So then we're going to draw our eye line about the similar height on the paper as this. So we're looking at that. So take your ruler and draw a horizontal. Make sure your line is horizontal. So this is my guideline here. Now, 
One of the things that's important with perspective drawing is to keep your vanishing points wide, keep them far away from each other. So I'm going to put them at the extremities. Here is one vanishing point, and here's going to be the other. If you put them too close, they'll make things look too dynamic and too pointy. So we need to keep them nice and wide. First of all, with our Turner house, once you've done that, I'm going to start with what I'm going to call the leading edge of the main block. So I'll start with the leading edge of the main block of the Turner house, and I'm going to draw a line like this. Okay, with a start and a stop. So in the relative same position, would you be able to do that at home? Okay. And then just as we did with the railway track, I'm now going to join up the base of the house with this vanishing point, and then the top of the house with the same vanishing point. Because they are parallel to each other, we therefore will converge to the, to the same vanishing point. I'm going to look at the photo, and I'm going to get the proportion of the rectangle about the same. So I'm just going to do that. And then the other side of the house must converge to the vanishing point, this side. And this is comparatively longer division. Okay, so now I've got a box. Like this. Okay, so now that wall is now this wall, and then this is the front. So, once you've achieved that, the next stage I need to do is find out how to put this apex of the roof in. So to find out how to put the apex in, I'm going to draw cross to cross, and cross to cross. Okay. I'm only going to do those lightly, pen's running out anyway. And then that's going to enable me to find, keep your verticals vertical, it's very easy to get them on the wonk. Yeah, you can even take a set square and put it on the baseline to see that you really force yourself to make sure that vertical is purely vertical. And we need to do a construction line up through the middle like that. Okay, And not going too high, if I look at the relationship here, I want to go up about here. That is going to be the height of the roof. So now I'm going to put the roof in. I'm going cross to cross, corner to corner. Put in there. And I'm just letting the line go a tiny bit over the edge to allow for guttering there. Okay. Top of the roof will go down to the vanishing point here. And it's fairly high up, so we're not going to see much of that part of the roof because we're a little bit below the roof. If you can put in that part there. Okay. If you can then take that angle, slide your ruler back till you get to the far wall, then you should be able to join up and get the line for the far edge of the roof. Okay. So that's our main block. First of all. Next I need to add on this bit part of the build here. So I'm just going to look at the division as it goes down that wall, put another vertical on to start adding that additional building. And it's going to go to the same vanishing point on the right. And the line will go up. Here on the left is about halfway up the wall, going to the vanishing point there. Okay. And it finishes about proportionally there with the vertical. Okay. 
Well, you can rub out. Where, where things overlap like that, you can rub them out. So I'm using a marker. I can't. I could just use a little bit of masking tape to cover it up so it becomes visually clearer for you at home, like that. Okay, these, the top and the bottom of this wall, the, the wall that's in shade, is going to go to the vanishing point. And judge the depth of it. Okay, so now I've got block one and block two. Okay, and then we just need to put in this other house here on the far, far side. Okay, so I'm going to take this line, and continue it to the vanishing point. And then put the vertical here. Okay. Okay, so now we've got the main body constructed. You've got the main building, and then you've got these two additional uh, buildings either side. I think probably a good idea would be to put on the, the chimneys next, these two chimneys here. So as a bit of guidance, you could go cross to cross and put them equidistant. So if you wanted to kind of calculate that a little bit, you could just lightly do a cross here. That's going to find me halfway along that wall. Then if I wanted to divide that into two more, I could do cross to cross again. And then half of a half is a quarter. Just roughly working out where that would be. That would find the exact center of that chimney, then I could do the same here with a cross and a cross this way, and that's going to enable me to find the exact center of that chimney. And I can give that some depth behind and some depth in front, so I give that some depth there, depth in front. And the same here. Just doesn't find see this pen's a bit darker. Okay, so that's just my line behind. In front, it needs some thickness like that. It stands out here. Okay. Top of the chimney goes up higher, higher. And then this is going to go to the vanishing point, of course, down here, to the vanishing point here. Okay, once, I'm going to do it twice. Okay, so that's going to be front, back, back of the chimney, give it some thickness. Okay. Drop that line down across, to keep them at the same height. And then this one will go to the vanishing point here. Okay. And there is a little feature on the chimneys, which we can add as well. Here, here. Wait, sir, can we get a second to copy that down, please? Yeah. Just two seconds. Yeah, no problem. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, all right. I'll just go over it so it's a little bit darker. Give you time to catch up. All the lines so far, apart from this angle of the roof, are vertical, or they go to that vanishing point on the right side or the left side. So if they're going anywhere else, that's where um, I'm getting it wrong. So let's just put that... Here. We need a new root markers. <laughs> okay, this is a dark one. Right, I'll go over this now, make it a bit darker so it's clearer for you. So
I'll also do, I'll just make it a little bit clearer if I just put some shading in. You don't need to shade yours at home. Um, I'm, I'm just literally doing it so it's it's got an ease of seeing what's going on. so far. I just want to hang on for two minutes so people can feel that they're, um, they're not getting lost. Now, um, one thing I don't know if you can notice, but on this part here, on that part of the roof, there's actually got a, a cut corner. So the corner's actually been cut, so it's a little bit more hexagonal there and there. So that will be my next move. watching on the camera right okay so next of all let's put this roof in and this build here okay so this roof is going to go to that vanishing point there yeah. and then we're going to pick an angle here again so we put, put this roof on going to the vanishing point there at this point here, it actually goes flat and is parallel to your eye line. So just put in a complete horizontal here. Because this is where the corners cut off. Okay, and it triangulates like that. And then this part of the roof will go to the vanishing point here. And this one will go to the vanishing point here. Okay, follow that angle along to get the back angle correct of the roof. And then we're going to cut off this corner, like this. Okay. So I've cut that corner. Now it's time to put the windows and doors in. So first of all, let's come to the front of the house here. There's a balcony. It's a raised balcony in the middle. So we've calculated the how to find the center. So we can then put the raised balcony here, which is going to go to the vanishing point there. Okay, let's put the balcony in. I tend to do a dot to decide the distance at the front and the distance at the back. So again, that dot at the back should be a tiny bit closer to the central line than the one in the front because it's the same as we looked at earlier with the railway sleepers. You can put the balcony coming to the vanishing point and then the top of the balcony 
like that. And then co equidistant with a, a tiny bit smaller on this side, tiny bit wider on that, this front, front area, only by a fraction. And you can put in the front windows. Okay, and then there's also an upper bedroom window. Do double line for the window ledge. And then again, keep this in line. So the front of the window needs to be in line with the bottom window and there like that. Okay. There's also a decorative feature coming along here at the top of the roof. And we give your front of your window a double thickness. Like that. And just let it overhang by a fraction. Okay, so now we've got the house in like that. Okay, let's put some shading in either side of the windows for the shadow. <clears throat> then I need to find this window here, this one. Okay, so for that one, I'm going to do cross to cross. Help me finding the center of that plane of the wall. Okay, that will find the center of the window. And again, go a little bit behind and in front, fractionally further away. And do a top and bottom. And this window here actually goes up to the roof itself. Okay. It's like this. Let's put this in a bit darker. And there are some panel features, I don't know if you can see, but there are some sort of decorative panel features that I can just put the impression on here and here. There are some sort of decorative inlays on the side of the build there. Okay, so then we also want to put this roof on the building that's further away from us. <clears throat> so I can descend this, this. This needs to go to that vanishing point on the side. So that's going to need to project down to that one. Like that. And then you can pick an angle for the roof at the back. It's just done by eye. Okay. Also a window on this side, I don't know if you can see on the picture, so we'd want to put that window again in. So again you can just do the cross to cross method. To find the centre of that plane. Okay. Right from that. Finding the centre of the window, again a bit the front, but a little closer behind. Yeah. That window also goes up to the roof. 
and the, the bottom and the window ledge will go to the vanishing point. Okay, pretty good. And then we can just put this window in here at the front here. So we can contextualize the setting. You can see here the River Thames. You see between Turner's house, which is now in St Margaret's, uh, and then the River Thames here, there's nothing but, um, in actual fact, that is a little bit close to actually where the building is. But there's nothing there at all. This is where all the houses are, uh, are now. So um, just incredible to think what the local area would have been like in Turner's day when he was living here. Um, so you can contextualise your landscape, and you can sort of... Uh, Let's see if I can get a mark of it actually works. And you can just do natural landscape shapes and some trees based off what I'm looking at here in the drawing. So overlapping lines also help to give, give the logic that things are going away from you and creating the illusion of depth on your paper. So if I put one line in front of another and make the lines lighter, and one goes in, when one goes in front of the other, the logic is clear that that's actually creating depth. So I can create the illusion that that's got a lot of space going away there, and also by making lighter marks. shadow underneath where the uh, guttering is. And once you've got the main structure down, which you've got here, you should be able to add additional features to customise your own drawing. You could make this balcony here look like it's coming out in front of you just by a bit more shading underneath there and putting a depth as that goes back to the vanishing point here. So this side of the balcony receding just with a short line there to the back. Some bars to stop you falling out. Okay.